Hello YouTube and welcome to the Indie Evolution channel. I'm in Gamer, and today we're going to be continuing our Let's Play series of Dead State, the new game by Double Bear Productions, zombie a survival horror RPG featuring turn-based combat. Uh, in episode 6, we raided this police station here. Found a lot of good guns, ran into a pretty big uh, scale battle with a group of looters outside of the police station. Uh, we were able to handle them. Really um, used some of our tactical advantages and we took them out. Uh, of course with fog of war and field of vision. You can't see their bodies here but this is where the battle took place. And now guys we have successfully our mission when we initially set out was to gather supplies to repair the fence at our stronghold here at our shelter rather um, I believe we have gathered enough equipment to make those repairs um, so we are going to head back to the shelter we've been to Lano Commercial Lano Residential and Downtown Splendid So we've gone through um, three of the game's maps. Mm. And here we are, back at our shelter with the supplies. I'm glad you made it back. I can only imagine what it was like out there. Looks like you brought everyone back. That's the first good news we've had in a while. We've been keeping supplies in the back room near the basement. If you have the parts for the fence, you should put them on the shelf and I'll organize everything for repairs. We managed to secure the school interior. It'll hold for tonight. But we'll all sleep a lot more soundly when that fence is up. Anyway, you must be tired. We set up a bed for you in the classrooms upstairs. Get some rest. We'll talk more in the morning. Thanks. I could use some sleep. Okay, and here we are back at our shelter. We did not do too much exploring of the shelter uh, in episode one. Wanted to get right out there and right into the action. I do know that he mentioned a shelter storage, which is actually here. Uh, and if you've noticed, a lot of our items <laughs> have actually disappeared from inventory. We had a, a large amount of uh, food and other supplies. Apparently, at least from my understanding, all of those are going to disappear from your inventory every time you come back to the shelter. They're automatically <laughs> going to go into your stock um, so you don't have to worry about so much keeping track of, of every little item um, but it is kind of jarring it, it seems kind of odd you know and even when I look at my stock I only see um, the toolbox but the items that are stored actually here in the shelter at least I'm pretty sure are going to be items, special quest items um, that are needed to build a certain tier of item. Uh, and that's why you only see the toolbox there. Because it is, if you read the uh, description here, it is a collection of quality tools used for delicate and heavy duty crafting required for construction of certain upgrades at the shelter. So there are certain items that are going to be required for you to upgrade facilities at the shelter and those items will appear here as you collect them. Okay. And we'll go ahead into the 
half area here. Looks like they're tracking everyone's work on this board. So we'll go over here to the job board. Actually, before I get us into the job board, Uh, we can go into this area where we can take a look at our character sheet. If you're curious about these skills, I have a whole video detailing these skills and their and some of their effects in game. Um, obviously, we have our inventory, which we've already been over. The goals section, I guess, is going to be kind of a quest log that's not included in the demo release. Um, but as far as our items, guys, that I discussed earlier, here they are. Um, and it's under your shelter tab. It shows how much fuel you have. And I'm pretty sure there will be context. Um, context sensitive dialogue that will come up at the final release. Um, but we can see our morale. I believe this is uh, maybe canned goods. I'm not sure. This is fresh food. Um, these are going to be tools and supplies. Antibiotics. And fuel of course. And then you will see here your scavenge party which is kind of your uh, I don't want to make a Star Trek reference guys I've been trying to resist it but come on this is the away team I mean come on <laughs> there's, there's just no there's no two ways about it this is my away team man um, so Brian Renee and Joel um, your character who you create just so you know for a final release as far as I know now your character will always have to be part of the away team um, so you're, when you make your starting character, you're going to want to have some kind of combat skills because you'll always be um, part of what goes on and part of uh, the combat scenarios. And if your character falls during battle, any other character falls in its permadeath, permadeath if your character falls um, or, or becomes infected and dies... Um, in the normal mode, your character will not be able to become infected. Your character will be immune. Um, that actually is going to spell game over. So that is something important to look out for. And now we can go to the job board. And now we're getting into some of the game's strategy elements here. And we can see right now Anita Cass has no job. Um, we do have a couple options here. And I'm going to assign her to... Okay, it looks like the fence is already built, so we're going to assign her to fence repair. And Davis Cray will assign him to fence repair. And that should be complete within 20 hours. On top of that, we have various uh, build options here. Um, a lot of these that... You see the kind of the no symbol, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, these are not available in the demo, uh, but will be available in the final release. You can see there's a pretty wide variety of upgrades that can be built, uh, and that'll improve the facilities at your shelter. Uh, as far as other jobs go, we have a chemist. Uh, upgrades it produces various weapons, items, and armor, and then it requires uh, science skill. So we can look here, and you can see that um, the chemist, if you have the appropriate facility, which looks like in most cases a science lab, and someone with a high enough science skill, um, it looks like we have the ability here to create Molotov cocktails, which would probably come in handy. Uh, antibiotics, firecrackers. 38 caliber ammo. I'm not sure how exactly he would go about making ammunition in a facility like this, but you know, it is a game. Um, so you can see there's a variety of items that he has at his disposal. Uh, the machinist can make arrows, 38 caliber speed load, sawed off shotgun. Maintenance is another area this basically assigns the character to go around fix making small repairs to the facility and boost the morale by three points a day uh, 
doctor requires a fairly high medical skill uh, and it, it is pretty much what you would think it is uh, patients heal twice as much per hour if a doctor is on duty there's also a farmer there's guard duty um, which helps defend the fence and improves morale the more guards you have uh, there's basic healing there's the mechanic, uh, completes upgrades and maintenance on vehicles. Uh, you are, you will be able to acquire cars, different, uh, and I believe also mounts, um, horses, this kind of thing uh, will be available. Maybe during the demo, but definitely at full release. Uh, relaxation, nurses, um, all of these are canceled out for a reason either we don't have someone with the skill or we don't have the facility to be able to build those as of yet um, so we'll go ahead and put him on fence repair it looks like we do have one staff member I haven't talked a lot about the morale system um, because we just haven't run into it yet um, but you can see this character here Elaine Martin who is a distraught survivor is uncooperative and we can't actually assign her to any tasks until we get her to the point where she is cooperative um, so we are probably gonna make that part of our part of our mission uh, while we are at the base and this is Anita she was kind of a rough and grumble uh, <laughs> member of the party very outspoken and uh, let's take a look at the game's conversation system and see what kind of story it throws at us here I don't know how many story elements are actually in the demo uh, there's a whole event system and and different elements to the game that I know are gonna be crucial to to gameplay at final release that are not implemented in the demo um, and I don't know if any of the kind of dynamic conversation content, the the type of conversation elements that will allow for a change in plot or a change in direction of the storyline, I don't know if those have been implemented for the demo. I am assuming that they have not been. Uh, and I have a lot of reasons for that, for that assumption. Uh, we will go and speak with Anita. What is it? Uh, well, here we go. Anything I can do to improve your mood? I would love some deodorant, especially if we're rationing water. And I'm a sucker for chocolates. Yeah, she looks like it. I'll go look for some. Okay. Well, we have uh, some vending machines over here. candy bar. I don't know if that's exactly chocolate. I had some chocolate bars that I believe I had scavenged out there. So I don't know if those are going to affect her mood. I don't know if finding these items, if you have to give them to that specific character or if just having them in stock um, improves their mood. And if that's the case, how do I find out which ones of these items are in stock? Uh, would be my second question. Okay. Those are things that haven't been made clear to me at this point. I haven't looked into a lot of information about the conversation system. Anita, that's fine. How did you get here? I drove my rig here. Well, not exactly. We were diverted here. I've done runs through Texas multiple times. I, I know the roads. If I don't, we'd probably still be stuck near Dallas. After a while, they were there just wasn't gas to be found anywhere, even in these tiny little towns. We really owe Davis our lives. If it wasn't for him guiding us here, I don't even know if we'd be alive. You're not from Splendid. What's going on in other areas? 
do you know what I think? It's the end of the world. I pray to God it's not, but the signs are all there. The dead getting up and walking around. I've seen things in the last week that I never thought possible. It's downright hellish in some places with all the bodies and fire and gangs. For the first time ever, I'm glad Renee's father isn't alive. So he didn't have to go through this. <coughs> Let's change the subject. What would you say your skills are? You don't drive a truck for as long as I have without knowing how to fight. Just have to win, just have to when thieves come snooping around. I know a bit about fixing them too, but just enough to get them to start. I couldn't rebuild an engine to save my life. Is that what you needed to know? I had another question for you. It can wait. See ya. Okay, so we went through the job board. Um, got everyone we could assign. I'm just going to go through. Kind of explore our surroundings here. I don't think there's anything we can really find in this area. See what Renee has to say. How's your head? It's fine. I did the best I could. Thanks. I'm grateful. It was nothing. Well, it was. You you were pretty beat up, but I'm glad I could help. You're too young to be a doctor. You studying medicine? Not quite. I'm training to be a doctor. I was finishing up another semester of vet school when mom... Vet school? Yeah, um, veterinary medicine, actually. I'm not trained on humans. I keep telling people that, but they keep treating me like a doctor, and it's terrifying. Let's talk about something else. How did you get here? I was at school when mom just showed up. She was worried about my safety. I guess most people were. But we were too busy with school to notice. Anyhow, mom, she's a truck driver. She wanted to drive us back to New Mexico. We've got family there. It was more secure than Baton Rouge. Mom's breezed the route plenty of times before, but with all the traffic and then Dallas being cut off, well, we were forced onto the back roads. We were almost out of gas and Mom was trying to find help on the radio. That's when Davis told us about the school. The splendid police brought us here when the truck died a few miles out. We've been here ever since. <laughs> what would you say your specialties are? Well, they've been having me patch people up here because of my schooling. But people aren't really my specialty. It's okay. I'm sure you'll be a real asset. I'll do what I can. I had another question. What do you think of me? Um, I don't really know you. You're a fast healer. Jeez, that's a weird thing to ask. Let me try another question. What do you think would make this place better? Um, I think I'd feel better if we took in some more people. There's got to be others out there looking for shelter. There's plenty of room here. I'll see what I can do. In your opinion, hmm. how bad is it out there? 
I saw things on the drive here. This woman doubting, doubting out in front of a car to have someone take her kid. This duffel bag on the side of the road squirming around. The sound of gunshots when people tried to run the roadblocks. I try not to think about it as much as that's possible. I should go. See you, Renee. Okay, so so far there's nothing in the conversations that we're having. It does give you background information on the characters. Um, but nothing really that's giving us any kind of quests, so to speak. Hi, um... So are you feeling okay? Trying not to think about it. Oh, I get you. Way to go, Joel. Sorry I brought it up. Not a problem. I had a few questions. What do you think would make this place better? Let's see. Guess I sure would feel better that fence was sturdier. Never much did a good job of keeping the middle school students from busting in and rearranging the letters on the board. I still don't know what's funny about a rusty trombone. You said you never shot your weapon. Would you be willing to part with it? My gun? Are you serious? That's like the first thing they teach you at cop school. Never loan out your gun, Joel. I mean, um, heck no. Fine, keep it. I'm going to get going, see if I can find another one. Um, it's pretty obvious from the dialogue options that we were meant to have these conversations before the first quest. Uh, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. How can I help? Anything that would improve your mood? I wish I could call my daughter, but more realistically, I guess I could use real coffee beans. That would make monitoring the radio easier. Gilderant would be nice. Gets a bit hot in here most days. I'll let you know what I come across. And, well, looks like there's a radio here. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Lane on the Fast Lane here at KHEK. Entering in, eight di entering in its eighth day of broadcast bringing you the latest news and freshest sounds of what might be the end of the world. Earlier we heard Squirrel Jelly with Someone Left the Light On, and before that we heard the sounds of me eating a protein bar. Mmm, yum. <sighs> now on to serious business. I just got a report on the emergency system, and this is very important. Pay very close attention to this. This is a bulletin straight from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And you know me, I'm not a serious guy, but this might save your life. According to this, hmm. um, wait, let me just read this part. Antibiotics, take, antibiotics taken daily will control but not cure the infection. Infected individuals that take daily doses of antibiotics will not show any symptoms nor progression of the disease. So if you're listening to me and you know how to get antibiotics, I highly advise you keep a stash on hand for emergencies. It just might save your life. I repeat. The DJ continues to repeat the same announcement. Okay, so... In our shelter stash, we can see there is a slot for antibiotics. Uh, 
Um, so that's why we would want to keep those in stock. If someone does get infected, we can keep them alive by giving them antibiotics. And here we are on the second floor and the sleeping quarters of our stronghold. And this is Elaine, the distraught. Um, crash survivor. I, it's all my fault. Mm. Are you okay? I, I can't. She starts to cry again. Snap out of it. Don't you see we need everybody we can here? Forget it. Okay, so apparently those weren't the magic words. Um... to get her to snap out of her shell. I don't know if you have to acquire some item. Maybe that helps her, um, you know, to become part of the team. Uh, we could definitely use another person because there's a lot to, a lot to build and uh, a lot of things we can advance in this shelter that are going to improve things for us. I'm also very interested in going out and seeing if I can find other survivors. So guys, that was day one of Dead State. Did a little exploring, got involved in a little combat. Um, so far, the turn-based combat I think is good. The variety of items and weapons I think is good. Especially when you consider that, you know, different weapons not only have different damage, different APs to use, but also different special attacks um, that you can do. Um, the UI, I, I, I'm liking the UI. I've seen an older version of the UI from uh, videos on the, or from still shots on the website. Um, that looked a little more, it had its advantages. I, I liked that UI, the look of it too. Um, but this one is good. I think it, I think it functions well. The controls, once you get used to them, I am accustomed in this type of game to having a right click and then you scroll the mouse and you can turn and control the camera that way. Uh, this game only allows you to do so with the W, A, S, and D keys. Um, so that was something a little a little different from, from the norm. Graphically, I think the graphics do their job. It's a nice looking game I believe they're using cell shaded graphics here but I'm not a hundred percent sure of that but either way it's I like the graphic style and it's you know they did a good job of, of detailing Central Texas um, I'm not sure if the town of Lano is supposed to actually be the town of Plano which is right outside of Dallas. I'm not sure if Splendid is supposed to be Dallas, but nonetheless, having been to Central Texas before, this does put me in the in that setting um, anyway. Um, according to what I see here, I don't know if this has been implemented yet or not, um, but characters can sustain injuries. We have seen that. Um, and in part of this demo, uh, zombies can be dismembered. Uh, haven't seen that actually take effect during day one. Maybe we'll be able to see that later on. Um, another big one is that the loot in the game is finite. So once you explore an area, there's very little reason to go back to it. The important part of that to gameplay, I believe, is going to be that you're going to have to keep venturing farther and farther out to gather supplies as supplies get more scarce. And there might actually, because there's a time element involved, 
um, the farther distance you go, that's going to lead to some interesting moments where a vehicle is probably may become necessary, and then the fuel is going to become all that more, all the more important. Uh, but we will see. I don't know if we'll get to really, you know, play out to the point where resources are scarce in just seven days. But we will, um, we will find that out. Um, so far, you know, we had one day, one quest, just to go out and find the materials for the fence. Hopefully, day two will reveal to us a second quest. Or hopefully multiple quests. It didn't really look like there was much to be gained plot-wise from conversation with our fellow survivors. At least not in this point. Like I said, we've seen several features that haven't been implemented. Um, so I don't know. You know, how that's going to play out in the full version of the game. But as the developers do release new versions and make tweaks, I will be releasing videos just to keep you guys up to date on what's going on. And I'll try to rem remember to mention it in the actual Let's Play videos. Okay, guys, that's about it. That is the end of day one. And we will be coming back with... Um, with day two in another episode so we will move Brian Double Bear over to the player's bed go to bed and end the day yes and this is the end of day screen here um, we can see that we gained 130 food for fresh food so our total food storage is 130 uh, the lettering here is quite small, probably uh, probably the lettering isn't designed for my resolution, um, which I'm using 1080. So I don't know if that will that would be something that I would like to see see corrected before the final release. So our food consumed, you can see our, our allies consumed 18 food. We were able to collect 130 food in a day, um, and only 18 of it was eaten. So we've got a pretty good... Well, I'm not sure if we actually... There might have already been some food existing, but you can see we're pretty well stocked for food. Uh, morale bonuses. We gained 150 morale from luxury items. Um, negotiation bonus. Your negotiation bonus, I believe, is based on your leadership skill. So that bonus should be constant or should go up as you upgrade your leadership skill. Um, the food found bonus, we did find food. That gave us a 20 morale bonus. And looks like we completed four upgrades. I don't know how that happened because I don't recall... You know, doing anything in that regard. And now for our morale penalties. Allies with good mood 2. That takes off 2. Content allies 2. That takes off 6. Unhappy allies 1. That takes off 7. And disgruntled allies 1. That takes off 9. But overall. Our morale change was up. 454 for a total of 604 morale. So far, guys, uh, day one was a rousing success. We managed to get out, tackle some zombies, tackle some looters, get some good equipment that our uh, team will be able to take out with us next time and only be stronger. Um, so that's going to bring episode seven to a close. It's also going to bring day one of the series to a close. And um, I will see you right back here, same Indie Evolution time, same in Gamer channel. Tune in for Episode 8, Dead State. You guys take her easy.